Hey there gang, Kawaii50 here with another fake grand order video playing some more catch up with those summer servants and it is time for us to finally go over the 4 star berserker Bryn Hilda. We're going to be going over allies, craft essences, and command codes, everything you need to know to make this Bryn Hilda Sigurd duo very, very potent in your teams. So hopefully this video helps you out and if it does, be sure to go ahead, like, and subscribe. Bryn's deck consists of one quick, one arts, and three buster cards with an AoE buster noble phantasm. That's right, we are back to the good old days of the ultra mega buster berserker. Her max HP of 10,023 is already a little bit on the low end, but that is further exacerbated by her class. Much like Kentoki, she is essentially made of paper, and any good critical attack is likely going to kill her immediately. Her max attack of 10,197 in true berserker fashion actually ends up going further, considering she is going to have class advantage against a variety of enemies. More often than not, you're going to be hitting for extra damage. Her NP per hit is at a 0.85%, but with only one arts and one quick card, you shouldn't expect her noble phantasm to charge all that much. And of course, being a berserker, her star absorption is absolutely pitiful, sitting at a measly 10. Unless you're making a lot of critical stars every turn for some reason, odds are she's never going to see them. Bryn's first skill is Swan Dress Summer Rank A+. This gives her two instances of evade that last for three turns, and also a 500 to 1000 damage cut that also lasts three times for three turns. This is a little better than your standard evade. Bryn is going to have multiple opportunities to evade that damage and be able to make sure she doesn't instantly die in a single hit. However, the damage cut in and of itself, while it seems like a nice bonus initially, likely is not going to be too helpful. Your Bryn Hilda is most likely still going to die even while the damage cut is up. We're going to go ahead and max this skill last since the main thing that is affected by this that's useful is the cooldown reduction. And your Bryn better be taking out enemies fast, otherwise she's not going to be on the field for very long. Bryn's second skill is Wisdom of Summer Rank B. This increases her NP gauge by 10 to 20% per turn for three turns, and also grants five to 10 critical stars each turn for three turns. We want to max this skill first because we want to use Bryn's Noble Phantasm as soon as possible, not only for the damage, but also for the very potent buff it provides that is affected by overcharge. Critical stars, of course, are just gravy. Your Bryn likely won't be seeing them, but you can actually use Bryn as a sort of weird pseudo supporter considering how this and her third skill work. And Bryn's third skill is Summertime Lover's Rank EX. This increases her arts and buster card effectiveness by 20 to 30% for three turns. And if an ally on her team is one of her beloved, it extends that buff to them as well. We're going to go ahead and max this skill second because a 20 to 30% jump, while nice, isn't as huge of a jump as we get from maxing out her NP gauge per turn skill. The buff that ends up extending is actually very nice and allows Bryn to occupy this weird pseudo berserker supporter that you can pair with basically any loved one that has an arts or buster card focus on them. It's, it's strange what Brynhilda occupies, but honestly, if you are looking for a budget supporter to help you out and you happen to pull Bryn during this summer event, she can actually be used to pretty decent effect. For Bryn's pen skills, we can actually focus on two of them for her. Extra attack boost is great for basically any Berserker servant or any servant that relies on face cards for damage rather than their noble phantasm. Bryn is of course the former. The extra bit of damage you're going to be doing from that class advantage is going to be very very helpful on those extra attacks as well. It might give you the extra little push that you need to actually slay your enemy. Load Magical Energy is of course excellent on basically any character in the game, and that extends to Brynhilda as well. 
and Bryn's Noble Phantasm is Brynhilda Sigurtane. This deals 300 to 500% damage to all enemies and has two very important effects that activate before damage is dealt. The first is Ignore Invincibility. Since this affects all face cards that follow it, this can be a great way for Bryn to get past any sort of pesky invincibility or evade buff that your enemy ends up having. Most importantly though, this increases Buster card effectiveness by 20 to 60% for that turn, and this is completely and utterly affected by Overcharge. So if you have any way to increase Bryn's Overcharge, you're going to be getting a pretty meaty Buster boost, and if you're hitting in a Buster Brave Chain with that Noble Phantasm, you're going to actually see a hefty, hefty amount of damage. So who should we pair Bryn with? Well, she is a Buster Servant, and while some might recommend Koyanskaya and Oberon, Bryn is not necessarily as effective a AoE Buster Farmer as some other characters that can exist in the game. I would actually, because of her Ignore Invincibility on her Noble Phantasm, would recommend her as more of a Boss Slayer that uses the AoE Noble Phantasm as a sort of buff that helps them hurt the boss more. So Merlin is going to be our main go-to, providing that Buster card effectiveness as well as that extra survivability from his own invincibility buff he provides to the party. There are of course other servants we can pair Bryn with, and I'm going to go over a couple of those options as well. Also, don't make my recommendation here shy you away from pairing Koyanskaya or Oberon with Brynhilda. They can be very effective options with her, they're just not as good as Merlin in my opinion. Big Daddy Chen Gong is of course our budget option because of Tactician's Cherished Desire. This is a very, very potent buster boost to an ally for one turn that you're going to want to use on the turn Bryn uses her Noble Phantasm. It grants a little bit of a max HP boost, but she is also able to benefit from that critical strength boost for one Berserker ally. If you're able to generate a lot of stars, either through allies or through some sort of skill, then you can reliably have Brynhilda actually deal some critical damage if you have enough critical stars. Wouldn't that be nice? Osakabe Hime can of course be a good alternate 5 star option considering her Noble Phantasm now provides Buster card effectiveness for 3 turns. And you can go ahead and use this before Bryn's Noble Phantasm to get a little bit of a boost if you've only got one Buster card. Hey, Dealing extra damage on one Buster card is better than dealing extra damage on no Buster cards. She also, of course, has the ability to charge an ally's NP gauge by 20%, which Bryn would very much appreciate, and she can increase the critical strength of all allies for three turns, if you're, again, somehow generating a lot of critical stars for Bryn to actually gobble up, considering eh, maybe you're running Fragment of 2030. I don't know. But the most potent alternative supporter for Brynhilda is the upcoming Queen Himiko. Himiko is able to grant all allies an attack boost and 8 critical stars each turn for all allies. So each ally is generating 8 critical stars. Brynhilda might actually see some of those stars. Her Noble Phantasm is also incredible, providing a Buster card effectiveness to all allies for 3 turns and an NP overcharge increase by 2, which of course stacks with any craft S essences or additional effects you have on Bryn, so you can definitely maximize that buster card boost on subsequent turns. When it comes to craft essences for Bryn, one of the first things we can definitely consider is maxing out that buster card boost that she gets off of her Noble Phantasm. Devilish Bodhisattva can of course be great because of the starting NP gauge it provides. Bryn is able to ramp up her NP a little faster thanks to her second skill. One Who Wishes for Salvation is also an excellent pick for NP overcharge. This affects multiple times and can be a good pick on Brynhilda for longer form fights. It however doesn't provide that starting NP gauge, so you might want to be a little bit more careful. I'd also like you to be on the lookout for a CE called Five Major Elements. This increases Buster card effectiveness by 15-20%, to 20%, which Bryn would like with her three Buster card stack deck, and also grants an NP overcharge level increase as well. Some players will mention the Black Grail on Bryn increasing that extra damage. I say it's honestly an okay option. I would much rather see that Buster card effectiveness go up from NP overcharge 
charge so she can go ahead and deal extra damage with her face cards. But this is, of course, a solid option you can put on any servant if you want to strengthen their noble phantasm. I would say Bryn's actual best craft essence would be Partake with the King. This grants 10 to 15% buster card effectiveness and grants her a solid starting NP gauge. This is a good one for shorter fights, but if you're looking to maximize effectiveness on longer fights, one who wishes for salvation or that five major elements that I mentioned are going to be a better push. And finally, command codes. Command codes on Bryn can be mercifully simple because, well, a lot of those star gather command codes we would like on a lot of other servants, Bryn can't really benefit from because her base star gather rate is so pitiful. Any sort of multiplier that she gets is actually not going to be helpful in the slightest. So you can give her star drop rate on her quick card and just full code cure on the rest of her subsequent cards if you're looking to do something that's a little bit more budget. There are, however, a couple of other command codes I feel are worth mention for giving Summer Brynhilda, the first being the elegant classic Phantom Thief hat. If she's able to remove an NP damage up from an enemy with this card, then she is going to reduce the enemy's buster defense by 10% for three turns. A very effective buff for Brynhilda. Giant Blue Ox is an excellent pick. This allows the engraved card to ignore any sort of defense. Chuck this on a buster card and you should see it doing a little bit of extra damage even if your ally has some defense buffs up. Sorry your enemy. Your allies want to keep those defense buffs up. And sort of the beginning and the end offers a nice 1000 damage flat boost. You won't really be seeing much beyond that. So just go ahead and chuck this on a buster card to do a little bit of extra damage. Overall, gang, Brynhilda is a solid berserker for you to add to her arsenal. She, of course, has a couple of problems, mainly being the fact that her Noble Phantasm is AoE rather than single target. I feel like she really would have excelled a lot more if her Noble Phantasm was single target, would have gotten a lot more extra damage out of that, and would have justified Black Grail's existence a little bit more on her. But she does offer some extra options for Masters to use. If you want to use her as a weak weird pseudo supporter, increasing arts and buster card effectiveness for a particular beloved of Brynhilda, maybe Sigurd, go ahead and chuck Fragment of 2030 on her and you will find a pretty dang decent budget support option. But overall, Brynhilda is a pretty dang good berserker to add to your team. I would highly recommend using her as a sort of weird single enemy big challenge quest damage dealer who happens to deal extra damage to adds rather than focusing her on a full farmer. There are, of course, better berserkers out there. I don't think she's going to end up dethroning Heracles anytime soon, but Brynhilda is an overall decent pick. Just really wish that Noble Phantasm was single target, though. I really, really wish that. But of course, I want to know what you all think, so let me know your thoughts about Summer Bryn down in the comments section below. Let me know if there are any allies, craft essences, or command codes you think I might have missed. And if you have a particular loved one you want to pair Brynhilda with, let me know which one of Brynhilda's beloveds you are going to go ahead and pair her with. If you want to talk more Fake Grand Order, of course, my Discord server is always open. I want to give a big thanks to patrons on Patreon, subscribers and followers on Twitch, and of course, all of you here on YouTube for for giving me the motivation to continue making these videos. I really do appreciate it. Anyways, gang, that's it for me, Kawaii50. I hope you all have a phenomenal day, and I will see you all in the next video.